Hi, and welcome to this edition of Preservation Workshops, or How to Be Your Own Curator at Home. I'm Sue Taylor. I'm the Chief Curator for the New Mexico Museum of Space History, and today we are going to talk about toys, how to preserve your past. A lot of people think that because they were your toys and you played with them that as you get older you don't have to worry about them. Well, actually you do, because if you go online you'll be amazed at what some of the toys that we played with as kids are worth. What I'm going to do is show you a few toys. I'm going to share with you mine and also some that I managed to bring back from the museum when I was there the other day. To start off with, I'm showing you one of my dolls from Czechoslovakia. I got this when I was eight years old. Needless to say, he's in pretty good condition because I have taken care of him. I took him out of his case for today because I thought you might like to get a better look at what he's made from. He is made from composition and I will talk a little bit more about that later. Another one of my dolls that I have is this one from Yugoslavia. I protect her by keeping her under a glass dome. You can actually buy these domes in different sizes, but be sure you measure the height and width of your dolls first. As you can see, she's still on her stand, and all I have to do is put the globe over top of her, and she's protected from dust and dirt and anything else. Another doll that I have is my Bewitched Barbie. <laughs> I actually have a lot of Barbies, but I wasn't about to bring them out because they would probably fill this whole room. Most of them are in their original boxes. As you can see, the box can be a display, and it works just as well as if I were to put it in a special display box. Again, I'll be showing you different types of storage display boxes in a little bit. Another one of my special toys that I have here is my True View. Now, many of you are more familiar with Viewmaster. This is a True View from, okay, I'll give you my age, the 1950s. And it worked with a card like this and it still works. Occasionally I still use it and I have kept it in good condition because I keep it in a special box. Now the museum also has one but they had to get this online. It's the more traditional Viewmaster. This is what a lot of you out there are probably more familiar with and this one talks. I don't know if it works or not, we haven't tried. But as you can see, as I have it protected in a special bag that again, you can buy, it's acid free, it's polyvinyl, and as you can see, it had the circular type of slides rather than the card like mine had. And again, it's being taken care of in our collections, just like I take care of my stuff here at home. Another thing that I have, this is my own personal, it's a space bank from the 1960s, and it's honoring the Mercury astronauts. I am not going to demonstrate it because I don't want it to get stuck, but you would put the little rocket down, put your coin in, and it would shoot it up into the bank thing that's up there. Uh, kind of neat. Oh yeah, it had a little button back here that would allow it to work. Another item that I have from the museum is this game called Blast Off. And you can see it's in very good condition. This normally lives in a special acid-free box in the museum storage area.
We also have, how many of you have this old tin type of lunchbox? The astronauts. And this one, of course, dates from the late 60s, the early 70s. But it's again a museum collection and it's taken care of, again, by being kept in a special acid-free box. Another tin object that we have from the museum is this Russian cookie tin. Again, in very good condition. It has the rockets on one side, and it has, I think that's Merry Christmas in Cyrillic. I'm not sure. I haven't translated it yet. But it's kind of neat. Christmas on one side and rockets on the other. And lastly, we have a Russian ray gun. Again, this is from the 60s in very, very good condition that again we were able to find online for our collection. The reason why these toys are in such good condition is because of the way people took care of them. Let's move on now and I'll talk about some other toys and how you can store them. Some of you out there may have a cast iron toy car like this one. Or how about a cast iron Santa with his sled and reindeer? Perhaps you inherited one from your grandparents, or it's been in your family for years and you don't know how you got it. Either way, it's yours now. How about a speedboat made of tin? Here is another example of a doll made of composition. A composition doll is a doll made partially or wholly out of composition, which is a composite material composed of sawdust, glue, and other materials such as cornstarch, resin, and wood flour. Yes, wood flour. In case you don't recognize her, it's Shirley Temple. Storage to protect your dolls or even tin rocket ships is important. This is an acid-free box with what's called an hourglass window. You'll see some, but not all, of your object. Another example of an acid-free box with the full front window is this. I like it because you can see the whole object. If you have more than one doll, these multi-doll acid-free boxes can hold up to six dolls. They also have the full front window. For those of you who collect the Matchbox race cars, they make acid-free boxes in which you can store multiple cars. This one holds 20 cars. For display purposes, you can also buy a case such as this that has movable glass doors so you can change out what you are showing. This is holding 42 cars. If you have a model the size of the Starship Enterprise, you can buy flip-top acid-free boxes such as the one shown here. They come in various sizes for your needs. You want to make sure that when storing for a long period of time that you use acid-free tissue. This model is packed with shredded acid-free tissue. You can buy acid-free tissue sheets such as these at any good archival supply online. You are probably wondering about board games. Yes, they need to be protected as well. This is a game of life from the 1970s. Look in your garage. You may have one. You will probably notice that the cardboard boxes don't hold up really well, especially the corners. When you see this, please do not use scotch tape, duct tape, or packing tape. You will ruin the box. You can try using Elmer's glue, which is pinovinyl acetate. It is water soluble should you ever want to remove it and it will not discolor the cardboard the way tape will. The best way to store your games is to use acid free boxes. You can either use a lidded box such as this which has a deep lid or one like this which is a drop front. This type is good since you can just slide out the board game and not risk damaging it by picking it up 
out of a top loading box. Remember that if you have cast iron toys or tin or cardboard games, the most important thing to remember is to keep them away from any place where they are likely to get wet. You want to make sure that they are in a climate controlled environment and that the humidity is kept extremely low. Well, I hope you learned a couple of things. What I want to wrap up with now is first off, I hope you noticed that even when I was handling my very own collection, I used the white cotton gloves. You do that even in your own home, whether you played with them as a kid or not. It is what preserves your artifacts. We have talked before about how to properly clean. With toys, it's the same thing. Make sure they are well dusted. Make sure that they are protected from sunlight. You want them in areas where there are low light levels. You want them in boxes where they can be further protected, or you want them under domes in special places. All this will help preserve your toys for future generations. You can buy the special acid-free materials and even plastic bags from any good archival source. And last, don't let your grandchildren play with them. They won't last for long. So if you want them to last a long time and maybe get some money for them from eBay or wherever online, take care of them. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Preservation Workshops or How to Be Your Own Curator at Home. I'm Sue Taylor, Chief Curator for the New Mexico Museum of Space History. You can reach me at sue.taylor at state.nm.org. US. Please subscribe to the museum's YouTube channel where not only will you find other of my preservation workshop videos, but other programs as well that are pretty fascinating. Stay home, stay safe, and take care.